Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Patrick Donahue and this is The Home Geologist, a series where I'll be teaching you geologic principles using common household materials. Today we'll be talking about mineral cleavage and fracture, where they're pretty straightforward properties of minerals and cleavage is the tendency of a mineral to break along an atomic plane, so basically planes of weakness in a mineral. Fracture, on the other hand, is when a mineral breaks rather than cleaves, and that's because in those minerals, the atomic forces essentially equal out in all directions, and so there's no preferential break. Since this is a straightforward topic, I figure we'll jump right into the examples, and then I'll show you a couple of minerals and their characteristic cleavages. As one example, if you have a deck of cards, if this was a mineral, then the cleavage plane would be the way that you separate the planes of the decks of cards from the pack. This is similar to biotite or muscovite cleavage, which has a perfect cleavage along one plane and breaks off into sort of sheets of mica. Another example of that might be a stack of post-it notes, where they're connected to each other and you have to peel off the layers from each other. If you try to go in another direction, then you'll break or tear or fracture the mineral, but it goes in one direction perfectly. Now in this example, it actually demonstrates that minerals that have cleavage can still fracture. If you apply enough force in the right direction on the planes of the mineral, you can fracture them. Minerals that have cleavage will also have fracture, but minerals that fracture don't necessarily have cleavage. If you've ever chopped wood, you've taken advantage of the planes of weakness along the vertical axis of the wood, where if I tried to chop it this way, it would just fracture and splinter. But this way, it's a sort of plane of cleavage in a biotic piece of material. If you have coarse salt in your house, then you have a perfect example of cubic cleavage at your fingertips, where this is a cheat because salt is a mineral, but this has three perfect planes of cleavage, and you can see many of them are irregular, but we have a lot of blocky shapes in here because it breaks perfectly in three directions. And if I was able to take some of these and break them, then they break along linear planes, which are the planes of weakness in the salt. One complicating factor is that minerals, when they're allowed to form into their ideal shapes, have a crystal habit or form. And that can be a little tricky to discern from cleavage when you're just looking at a form, for some minerals anyway. So as an example, in your fridge, you might have some ice, and this form that it's in is essentially the crystal habit, the way that it's shaped. Although with minerals, that has to do with the interior atomic properties rather than the mold that it's in. But if we were to break this and it broke along that same orientation of this plane, for example, then that might be cleavage. But if we break it, all we have is a fracture. So this doesn't have any cleavage, it would have a fracture. So what does this mean in terms of minerals? Well, we've already seen with salt that perfect cubic cleavage forms cubes. Similarly, calcite has a perfect cleavage in three directions, as opposed to salt, which is cubic. This forms rhombohedra because of the mineral structure. It's a rhombohedral structure instead of a cubic structure. Going back to the cards or the post-it note analogy, biotite or muscovite have one perfect plane of cleavage, which peel off in sort of pages. So there's a bit of muscovite winking in the light, and I can peel off a single flake of that very easily. And that's because those bonds between that in that one direction are the weakest. And there are minerals like fluorite, which have four planes of cleavage, which you can think of it kind of like the calcite plus an extra plane of cleavage, basically. So in this side view here, there's kind of a blocky rhombohedra almost shape. And then there's one extra plane that kind of goes into the crystal that way. For mineral forms, quartz is a good example. It's very bright, but you can see these are all crystal forms of quartz. They form pyramidal terminations, 
but on the side, it's all fractured because quartz, although it does have cleavage, it's very poor to imperfect, and it usually t tends to just fracture in a conchoidal pattern. And mineral cleavage is ranked on a sliding scale from perfect to indistinct, and in between there, there are terms like good or poor that you can apply depending on how well it breaks along those planes. Thanks for watching this episode of The Home Geologist. I hope you enjoyed learning about mineral cleavage and fracture. Be sure to like and subscribe so you see future videos when they come out. And until then, see you next time. Break it. <laughs>